There are some truly unique, beautiful, and astounding creatures on this planet. But humans looked at this rich tapestry of creation and thought, what if we just smush these animals together? From monster cows to wild wolf dogs, from solar-powered plant slugs to gross naked chickens, these are some of the freakiest animal hybrids you won't believe exist. <laughs> Liger King Lions have long been called the kings of the jungle, but they're about to be dethroned by a close relative. Introducing the Liger, an absolute unit that's the result of a male lion breeding with a female tiger. Ligers are humongous creatures and have been known to stand more than 4 feet at the shoulder, stretch as long as 12 feet, and weigh up to 1,200 pounds. That's twice the size of a refrigerator, and as heavy as a grand piano. For contrast, a purebred African lion on the larger side can grow to be 10 feet long and weigh up to 550 pounds. This easily makes the Liger the biggest big cat in the world. Now, the Liger's huge size comes down to a specific mix of genes it's inherited from its parents. A male lion must compete for breeding rights, so his genes promote growth in his offspring to ensure they survive. Usually, the genes of a lioness will inhibit this growth so that she can carry multiple offspring, but the genes of a tigress are geared towards producing singular offspring. That means they can inhibit the male lion's growth genes in their offspring, leading to one massive Liger. It's for this reason if you cross a male tiger with a lioness, you get tigons, which are much smaller and more aggressive than ligers. Sadly, because of this gene switch, ligers and tigons tend to have a lot of health problems and don't usually survive through infancy. As lions and tigers have no naturally overlapping habitats, ligers and tigons only exist in captivity, and it's currently thought there are less than 100 in the world. Considering how huge and aggressive these creatures can be, I'd say that's probably a good thing. Pizzly Poo Now you understand how hybrid animals are named, you can probably guess what a growler bear is. Yep, the growler bear is the fierce and formidable mix of a grizzly bear and a polar bear. If the polar bear is the mother, that is. If the polar bear is the father, the creature is embarrassingly called a pizzly bear. But whatever you call them, they're typically between 6.5 and, and 10 feet long and can weigh anywhere from 400 to 1,500 pounds. For comparison, a grizzly bear typically reaches 6.5 feet in length, while a polar bear can grow to about 10, meaning the growler bear comfortably sits between them in size. Interestingly, the growler bear can carry children and give birth to healthy cubs. This is unusual as most hybrid species mixed genes render them infertile. While the exact number of growler bears isn't known, they do exist in the wild, and sightings of them have become more common recently. This may be because unlike tigers and lions, grizzly and polar bear habitats overlap in the Arctic and Americas. This common ground has been increasing with time as global warming impacts the climate of the regions. It's been theorized that this increasing overlap combined with the growler bear's ability to produce offspring may mean they're the future of bear kind. This might be bad news for us though, as growlers are apparently more aggressive and much braver than grizzlies. Oh boy, camping is about to get real interesting. What do you think? Would you be sad to see the two species go, or do you welcome our new ursine overlords? Let me know in the comments down below, and make sure you like and subscribe for more eye-opening content like this. Now what have we got next? So far we've had ligers, tigons, and pizzlies, oh my. Wada Wolfen. So now you know that hulking hybrids walk the surface of the Earth, I think it's only fair to let you know that the ocean isn't any safer. This bizarre creature is known as the Wolfen, and it's what happens when a whale breeds with a dolphin. To be more specific, it's what happens when a false killer whale breeds with a bottlenose dolphin, before you get too confused as to how that might work. In 1985, a wolfen was born to false killer whale Anui Kahai and dolphin mother Punahele in the Honolulu Sea Life Park. The cat was named Kekamalu, which means from the peaceful ocean, though if you ask me, the resulting creature is a little too creepy looking for that name. Wolfens are certainly odd looking creatures. Their heads resemble false killer whales, however their noses are more dolphin-like. And those teeth are just straight up unsettling. Their color is also a steely gray, which is an interesting halfway point between the coloration of their parents. Before Kekemalu was born, park handlers couldn't imagine a romance blossoming between her parents. 
After all, Ayanui Kahai was 14 feet long and 2,000 pounds, whereas the mom was 6 feet long and barely 400 pounds. That's what you get for underestimating the power of love, I guess. Kaikai Malu grew up quickly and after just two years was larger than her mother. She's now fully grown and gave birth to her own one-quarter false killer whale wolfen calf in 2005. Though extremely rare, wolfens have been spotted in the wild, so the two species may have more in common than we first thought. Love certainly does find a way. Israeli Fried Goblins there are many strange and bizarre creatures on Earth, and while some of them might seem ugly, they're no less deserving of life or respect. They can all elicit a sense of awe once you learn a little more about them. That is, unless they're these things. <sighs> In my opinion, these suck and straight up shouldn't exist. What you're looking at right now is a pale red, featherless species of chicken that's been intentionally bred in Israel. The species was apparently created by interbreeding naturally bare-necked chickens with broiler chickens. So what have these bizarre little goblins been bred for? Well, in the farming community, a naturally naked chicken saves workers from having to pluck the feathers once they've been culled. Additionally, when you're farming hundreds of fluffy birds that are all close together, they can generate a lot of heat. It's not uncommon for chickens to overheat and even die in crowded farms. A chicken without feathers aims to solve both of those problems. If you think this is a little morbid, consider this. Someone bred a freakish species of bird just to make calling it easier and didn't even bother giving it a proper name. Man, looks like humans are the ugly ones here. Incredible Cows In the world of cattle, there was a male steer who really stood out from his herd. And his name was, don't laugh, Nickers. At 6 feet 4 inches tall and 2,800 pounds, this Holstein Friesian steer was roughly the height of Dwayne the Rock Johnson and weighed about 11 times as much. That's some big knickers. But despite this steer's gargantuan size, even he couldn't compete with the man-made hybrid that is the Belgian Blue, sometimes called a super cow. I can see why. This beastly bovine looks like it could give the Man of Steel a run for his money. Now, super cows measure in at roughly 5 feet at the shoulders, but can weigh more than 2,800 pounds. That means compared to knickers, they're carrying much more body weight on a much smaller frame, making them look jacked as hell. The species was bred into existence in the latter half of the 19th century, when domesticated Belgian cattle were bred with imported British shorthorn bulls. It was found these cows were more likely to have a rare double musculature characteristic, which they were then bred for. The trait was a boon for butchers, as a Belgian blue yields up to 80% more beef than that of a regular cow. Despite being such a useful creature for the farming industry, many claim the breeding of super cows is unethical. This is because many of the cows are so muscular, they have a hard time moving around and living comfortable lives. Belgian blue meat seems too big for me anyway. I'm more of a grazer. Hungry like the wolf dog. If you think your dog is a troublemaker, boy, be thankful you've never had to house train a wolf dog. As the name suggests, these canines are the result of breeding wolves with regular domesticated dogs. Breeding is more likely to be successful between wolves and dog breeds that are already more wolf-like, such as huskies, German shepherds, and malamutes. Wolf dogs don't occur in the wild very often, as wolves are generally territorial and untrusting of creatures outside of their tight-knit packs. Wolf dogs themselves tend to be wilder and less predictable than regular dogs. This makes sense when you think about it. After all, dogs are just wolves humans have selectively bred over centuries to be calmer and easier to control. By breeding one with a wolf, you're kind of just undoing all the hard work we put into domesticating them. Wolf dogs can weigh up to 120 pounds and stand as tall as 3 feet at the shoulder. On average, this makes them about as tall as wolves, if a bit leaner. Don't let that fool you though. These semi-wild poochies have been known to jump over 8 feet in a single bound. Their closeness to wolves also means they prefer a diet of raw meat mixed with grain-free kibble. Though some can be sweet and easygoing, their general unpredictability and strength means you aren't advised to get one as a pet. So if you see one down at the pound, go for the chihuahua instead. Serval Options we're going from wild wolf dogs to curious cats with this next creature couple. A serval is an interesting kitty, being one of Africa's lesser known predator cats. 
Unlike big cats, however, the serval only stands about two feet tall, weighs under 40 pounds, and has a head that looks just a little too small for its body. At this size, the cat is small enough that some very troubled breeders experimented with what it could mate with. This tawny tabby is a savanna cat and is the result of a breeding a serval with a regular everyday house cat. The slender savanna cat is a little taller than your average moggy, at about a foot and a half tall, with the serval's distinct stripes and spots all over its fur. This distinctive appearance has made the savanna cat a popular pet, though it's reportedly much more territorial and aggressive than regular cats. A savanna cat can pose a danger to both owners and other pets, and for these reasons, it's illegal to own one in certain U.S. states like Hawaii and Georgia. Servals have also been bred with caracals, which are noble-looking cats found in India and Africa. Caracals are roughly the same size as servals, and even though their habitats do overlap, caraval or cervical hybrids are exceptionally rare and have only ever been seen in captivity. However wild these crossbreeds may sound, don't be fooled. They're still cats, through and through. The Living Lettuce Remember when you were little and your mom would say, you are what you eat? Well, that may not be true for us, but it certainly is for this little guy. Meet the green sea slug, or the eastern emerald Elysia, when it's trying to show off. This unassuming gastropod can be found all along the United States' eastern coast and can grow to be about two and a half inches long. So what makes it a hybrid? Well, this greedy species has gobbled up so much algae over the centuries that it's developed the ability to produce its own chlorophyll, making it half slug, half plant. Chlorophyll is the substance that allows plants to convert sunlight into energy, effectively making the green sea slug the world's first solar-powered slug, as well as the first freaky plant-animal hybrid. It might help to think of the slug as more of a hybrid car than a hybrid animal. Hybrid cars can run on a mixture of both gas and electricity, and the sea slug is the same way. Except instead of gas and electricity, the slug runs on food and solar power. That's pretty impressive. Maybe in another 20 years, it'll just run on batteries. Jeopardous Jag Lions Jaguars and lions are both incredibly imposing felines. Lions are muscular monsters with males typically weighing around 420 pounds. While jaguars are a little leaner at an average of 260 pounds, they're still the third largest big cat in the world and are more devious and sneaky hunters than the lion. Both cats are apex predators, meaning they're at the very top of their respective food chains. Lions can take down huge buffalo, while jaguars regularly prey on ferocious caiman. Imagine the offspring these two terrible hunters would produce. Now, imagine it in stealth mode. These two cats are Jazara and Tsunami, and they're the offspring of Lioness Lola and Black Jaguar Diablo in Bear Creek Sanctuary. As lions primarily roam Africa and jaguars mainly stalk the Amazon, they may be the only jag lions in the world. As you can tell, Jazara has inherited his father's melanistic genes, meaning he has a higher than normal level of pigment producing cells that make his fur jet black. Considering Jazara takes more after his jaguar father, he's likely more inclined to be a nighttime stealth hunting machine like him. With his dark coloring and that extra pinch of lion muscle, I'm certainly relieved there aren't more predators like him stalking the jungle. Jazara and Tsunami still live in Bear Creek to this day with their parents, who are apparently inseparable. Can you imagine an argument breaking out in that enclosure? And you thought your family was intense. Black Tip Terror I'm willing to bet that if you were out swimming in the ocean and saw a shark fin poking out of the water, you'd be pretty scared. Well, I'm here to tell you that if that shark fin has a little black tip at the top, you should be even more scared. The Australian black tip shark lives primarily in warmer climates, like as its name suggests, the Australian coast and can be identified by the little black tips on its fins. The shark comes in at around 5.2 feet, and while a shark of any size is scary, comparatively speaking, that's not that big. Regular black tip sharks, however, usually live over a thousand miles away from Australia. They grow to about 6.6 .6 feet, but have been known to grow to as large as 8 feet. Australians should be pretty worried then that their comparatively dinky black tip sharks have been having hybrid babies with the larger breed. A group of Australian researchers identified not one, not two, but 57 hybridized black tip sharks not far from the northern Australian coast. 
It's theorized that like the growler bear, the hybrid blacktip might be the result of changing climates and expanding habitats. This is especially worrying as regular black tips are known to bite humans. As if Australians didn't have enough deadly animals to worry about already. Oh dog. Sometimes it's just impossible to make a relationship work. Your personalities might clash, you might want different things for the future, or one of you might be 22 times the size of the other. What? The next monstrosity we're about to meet is the Chidane-Dane. If you've been paying attention to naming conventions and know anything about dog breeds, I bet your eyes are widening right now. That's because the average Great Dane stands between 30 and 34 inches tall and can weigh up to 200 pounds. But a Chihuahua tends to grow between 6 and 9 inches tall and weighs just 2 to 6 pounds. Just look at these two next to each other. As with several previous examples, intrepid breeders are the villains of this story, as they initially tried to breed a male Great Dane with a female Chihuahua. Ouch. After this, they attempted artificial insemination, but the little Chihuahua just couldn't carry the massive baby to term. Eventually, the breeders came to their senses and a male Chihuahua and female Great Dane made it. I can only assume a stepladder was involved somehow, but eventually, for God knows what reason, the Chidane Dane was born. Sometimes more respectfully called the Great Mexican Dog, the resulting breed is strange. It has a long body and short stubby legs with a large head that's shaped like that of a greyhound. The dogs are known to be loyal and friendly and typically grow to be twice the size of a Chihuahua, but still much smaller than a Great Dane. Now, it's not a bad dog, but I think these breeders were so preoccupied with whether or not they could that they didn't stop to think if they should. Yayam Legend In the movies, the mighty Godzilla is supposed to reside at the bottom of the ocean, but from the look of this next creature, I think he might be on land. This is Yai, and he's one very special croc. Yai is the only known hybrid crocodile in the world, his parents being a saltwater crocodile and a Siamese crocodile. But that's not the only record he holds. You see, Yai is a noticeably big boy. Just look at those other crocs next to him. In the year 2000, the Guinness World Records pronounced him the world's largest crocodile in captivity, coming in at an overwhelming 19 feet 8 inches long and weighing over 2,645 pounds. That's as long as a giraffe is tall and almost twice as heavy as an adult cow. Even scarier, Yai has apparently grown since then and by some accounts is now 21 feet long. Oftentimes, first-generation hybrid animals can grow to be much larger than either of their parents. This is a phenomenon known as hybrid vigor and may explain why Yai ended up as massive as he did. It's amazing Yai has grown up to 21 feet. I mean, most crocodiles just have four. But doom doom tsh. Yeah, I'll see myself out for that one. Mon pig? So far, the true hybrids we've looked at have had just two parents of different species. This next animal, however, is the work of humans dabbling in hybridization and using the results for their own gain. In 2019, scientists in China were able to successfully breed a pig with monkey genes in a lab environment, essentially creating the world's first monkey pig. While the piglets looked perfectly normal, a small portion of their genes came from Cynomolgus monkeys, also known as crab-eating macaques. The goal of the hybrid wasn't to create a pig that loves eating crabs, though. It was to further our understanding of gene manipulation, the hope is that experiments like these will eventually allow scientists to grow human organs and animals for transplant purposes. Unfortunately, we still have a lot to learn as the two monkey pigs sadly passed away within just one week of being born. But the experiment hadn't been in vain. The monkey DNA had been manipulated to produce a bright fluorescent protein, so the cells could be easily observed in the pig's liver, spleen, heart, and lungs. If you think this whole thing sounds a little creepy, well... It's just the tip of the Jeanberg. Pig monkey? Question, what do monkeys, pigs, and people all have in common? Answer, they're all part of the all-you-can-splice gene buffet. The Salk Institute is an international group of scientists that have been hard at work attempting to advance our understanding of genetic manipulation. Their end goal is similar to those of the previously mentioned Chinese scientists to be able to one day grow human organs inside of animal donors. The Salk Institute, however, skipped a few steps. Instead of beginning with pigs carrying monkey DNA, 
they went straight to pigs with human DNA. Human cells were merged with a pig embryo which was carried by a pig for three to four weeks. After this period, the embryo was removed so it could be studied in detail. Casting a wide net, the Salk Institute undertook a similar study which involved placing human cells into the embryo of a rhesus macaque monkey. This embryo was given even less time to develop between just one and two weeks. Technically, these embryos were chimeras and not hybrids as the creatures were merely one species with another's DNA inside it, rather than a 50-50 split crossbreed. Mixing human and animal DNA is extremely controversial and cannot be publicly funded in the US. Thus far, all funding has come from private donors, presumably billionaires that want to make flying monkey minions a reality. The result of all these tests conclude that we have a long, long way to go before artificial organ growth becomes a reality. In the pig-human embryo study, only about one in every 100,000 cells were human which is 0.00001%. This means that right now, even if organs could be grown in donor animals, they'd contain so little human DNA, they'd be rejected by a human host. But in 2020, the most human non-human so far was created in Japan. Researchers were able to record a mouse embryo that contained 4% human cells, and while this is hugely impressive, the research still needs a lot of time to develop. Uh poor choice of words. Phew, that last bunch was pretty creepy. What do you think? Are human-animal chimeras the way of the future? Are animal hybrids cool or a little disturbing? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.